Hello everyone, so today I will be speaking about the concept of panopticon in light of perception, beliefs, epistemology and novelty. So we imagine a hypothetical situation in which we have the panopticon, the round prison that is filled with, let's say, wardens that have their beliefs, perceptions, knowledge, education, opinions, worldviews, and so on. And in the middle of that, we have the prisoner. And the prisoner is also having his beliefs, perceptions, opinions, and so on, so on. Now, in a case, for example, if the panopticon is a religious structure, the prisoner that is brainwashed and indoctrinated into religion will be governed by ignorance. He will stay a prisoner. The problem starts when the prisoner doesn't share the religion of the panopticon wardens or doesn't share the belief structure, the opinions, the preferences, the knowledge, the episteme of the prisoner wardens. What happens then? Then the wardens start to think. And each of those wardens interprets everything about the prisoner back into what he knows. He has a model of the universe, of the world, and he thinks that this is everything. This is the limit of his knowledge, experience and perception. He doesn't go beyond it. If something goes beyond it, he interprets it back into what he knows. This is the limit of his world. So, let's say that we have various wardens. One is a religious fundamentalist Christian. Another one is a Jew. Another one is a Muslim. And another one is an atheist. And let's give the prisoner the privilege of being suddenly illumined or realized. Let's say that the lightning of illumination of Zeus hits the prisoner and he starts to read books. He starts to enrich his experiences and knowledge. He undergoes certain very weird anomalies, novelty to the prisoner wardens. For example, the gods decide that this guy has a potential to join the gods in the procession of gods as an entity of a higher soul. So now the wardens are confused. The Christian fundamentalists think that maybe he is Jesus or maybe he is the Antichrist, or maybe he is the devil himself, or maybe he is to be ignored. The Jew may think that maybe he is the Messiah, or maybe he is the naughty dragon, the seventh bitter dragon, or maybe he is to be ignored. The atheists think that the prisoner that was illumined and, for example, started seeing gods, apart from educating himself in social sciences, strict sciences, and so on and so on. That everything that the prisoner experiences under surveillance is a lie or something uh, that is irrational or unnecessary, superficial. Now, what happens when this prisoner in his inner world expands his nature and his mind, multiplies his intelligence by intelligence, his weird anomalous skills by anomalous skills, his toughness, resilience rises, and he no longer feels a prisoner of those wardens because he has liberated himself. He already is in the transcendent realm, although he is still a prisoner. So, what what does happen now? Well, the wardens are angry because they don't understand the prisoner. And in such a case, they may try to punish him 
or they may try to accuse him or offend him and they go all crazy for example if the individual prisoner is reading Buddhist literature or Hindu literature they assume he's a Buddhist or he's a Hinduist but he also reads Greek or Roman philosophy so maybe he's a Greek or Roman so let's assume that they don't ask him about the situation but they assume that their perception is right that the limits of their world are universal and absolute and here the problem starts because the prisoner transcended the prison he is already free but he's still under the boot of those deluded ignorant fanatics that want nothing of that person because their small brains are too small and their world is too limited to understand the expansive nature and mind and skills and anomalous magical prowess of the individual and that individual prisoner understands it he figured it out by himself he's an intelligent fellow but they never ask him they assume they're correct and on this basis they attack offend and destroy his life now when political and religious power comes into that perhaps they're ordered by those that want to keep their power and religious power over the swathes of masses outside the prison and inside the prisoner's warden's mind they find the prisoner a liability so they say punish him keep him low assassinate him or destroy him get rid of him we don't want the mess we want the status quo preserved everything must be silenced so let's assume this prisoner is a pagan with greek roman theology hindi buddhist ethics with good rapport with the gods and goddesses even a modified body becoming a demigod and fleshed what do those wardens do and powers to be well they're like monkeys the instinct of fear kicks in the instinct of terror what will the prisoner say if they start losing the grip over reality and the prisoner is pissed off and might get mad at those idiots so he says many things rhetorical devices interpretations functions of the language that the prisoner wardens have no idea how to use they have no idea about linguistics semantics semiotics general semantics neurolinguistic ideas they have no idea about that no they take the words for fundamental truths and words are merely abstracts so when we try to convey something we use those abstracts and masters of the language use it consciously both to influence in the rhetorics to manipulate to enchant to explain or to mischievously play with words now the wardens won't get any of that because they're too daft so they assume that if that person is mischievous he's evil if that person is playful there's something wrong about him if that person says something intelligent then they're completely topped off their heads so what does it amount to that the panopticon the black iron prison doesn't exist in the mind of this prisoner the reality of the world is as it is so he's still a prisoner of those bullshitters and idiots but he surpassed them in everything already what happens then well either the parties understand that the person concerned overarched them and has something intelligent to convey or they destroy that person in order to eliminate the problem the cognitive dissonance in their little brains 
Now suppose that that person is liberated and doesn't see this panopticon anymore and doesn't give a bloody hell about the realities of the world. He pursues and advances in his path, in his magical, occult, psychagogic training, in his epistemological training. He educates himself even more. He leaves those prisoner wardens and politickers and religious celebs and far behind. He doesn't give a fuck about them because in his mind, in his spirit, in his heart and soul, he's free. And that's where it all starts. Because the more the people realize that, the more free they become. And then they start to cooperate because intelligent and reasonable people tend to co cooperate with each other. They're not governed by fear because they overcame fear. Fear is an instinct of the past, of the animal, archaic man. They become more tough, more understanding, more cooperative. And that's what I wanted to convey. And if they, by chance, destroy that man, decide to kill him, well, his spirit already aligned with the gods and goddesses, ascends. And he doesn't give a fuck about it. About these religious political morons that buy their religious political bullshit on the mammalian monkey belief system level. No, no. The problem is that if his, for example, uh, Bodhisattva, he stays behind, to liberate others from that religious political bullshit. If he's not, he goes straight to the gods and becomes another god and a happy godhood. The problem is that not many people may realize it and they stay the prisoners that are pacified and ignorant. Not only that, if they surpass that they are still governed by idiots, imbeciles, and religious backward detritus fanatics. And that's a sorry state of affairs. I've been a victim of such treatment, that's why I present you the situation. Thank you.